A lot of times I get asked how do you weight or skin in Blender. I'm going to go through this graph really quickly so that you can get a, uh, an overall idea. If you have a, a sphere, and let's say that this is your mesh, you are going to need to create an armature bind to this. And I'm going to be talking a lot of terms from a lot of software so you can all relate to this because I know that this is not for a Blender uh, 10 years ago user, all right? I'm not directing this tutorial towards you guys. You guys are awesome. But this is aimed towards the new user, towards the, the one who's got 20 plus years in 3D animation and rigging and he doesn't know where to click here on Blender to get the tools working right, okay? And that's that misconception comes because they don't know the ter terminology or where things are organized inside Blender. Uh, when you need to create a bone, you're going to press Shift A to create an armature. And the armature is like a giant box where you can stuff little other boxes, all right? Like a giant drawer or a cabinet, which will have sub cabinets. All right, it's like the container for the hierarchy of the bones. So let's do that, Shift A and then Armature. Then we're going to select one single bone. And you can name that bone, like let's say bone one, but internally in Blender, what's happening on the outliner is that it will create an armature. In that armature, every bone that you will create will be stored. And that's the only unique name that it's got. So armature, armature, it's like the entire naming convention for rigs. Okay, so associate armature to rig. That's cool. Now, to edit or to modify or to duplicate or to create new bones, you don't shift A again. You don't. Because the hierarchy, the, the cabinet, has been created. Now what you need to do is to put or stuff more little cabinets inside that cabinet. And the way you do that is by entering the edit mode. By entering the edit mode, you can select the bone, like this one I have right here. And then I'm going to shift D. While I have selected it on edit mode, you have to switch modes on Blender, press tab, switch to edit mode by selecting obviously the bone, and then shift D, duplicate it, and then that's going to give us a second bone. Now, if you already renamed this as bone one, the second duplicated one, it, it will inherit a sequential number, so you get bone two. Now, those two bones, like we mentioned already, are going to be stored inside this little yellow little guy icon, which is called armature, okay? So, associate armature with rig. So, you don't create additional bones outside the armature that you already created. You create them inside. And how you do that? By entering the edit mode. This is crucial, because if you don't get this part, everything else will fall on its own weight. So there's a third step that you need to consider when you're creating things inside Blender. And I'm going to be explaining this technically from a point of view um, later on. But right now, what you need to check for um, as a third item on your checklist is that those bones that you have just created have available deformation for them. So you need to really um, go into the properties of each bone and then make sure that the tab that is named the form has a check mark, okay? That it's created with the form activated. Because otherwise, when you bind, when you skin, when you weight these bones, they will not affect your mesh. So make sure, please, make sure that the, the form check mark is it's on. All right, you got that? Perfect. Now, let's go into the actual weight weighting part. Wait, yes. Wait, <laughs> um, you first go back again into object mode, all right? You get out of edit mode because you, you don't want to edit any other bones. So in object mode, you first select your mesh, in this case, your sphere. First select this, your mesh, and then select your bones with shift click. Once you have that, you need to control P to create the automatic weights options. You're gonna be presented with a lot of options, but what you should really um, select its control P automatic weights and what's gonna happen is that the sphere it's going to automatically get assigned 
bone number one skinning. Okay, so let's say this is the bone. And the way to recognize what's going on with Blender and the weights assigned, it's by entering weight paint mode. But in weight paint mode, we have different colors that are already assigned to the sphere corresponding to the bone. And the way Blender has this labeled is from 0 to 50, okay? So this is the color assigned for a 0 influence, and this is the color assigned for 50% influence. Let me just get this out of the way. I'm from 0 to 50, you're going to get blue and green. And from 51 to 100, you're going to get yellow, green, and red, okay? So this is the color code that the automatic weights assign to that bone that you've created. So if you understand the, the, the situation here, red will become your 100% influence on the bone. That means that whatever you do with that bone, the vertices will react automatically, will react one-to-one -one deformation. Obviously, if you're 50% influenced, then that first bone is going to be affecting this mesh 50% only, and then the second bone will affect the other remaining 50%. And obviously, if it's got a uh, weight paint of zero, then the sphere, if you check it out on the weight paint mode, it's going to be entirely blue. The automatic weights will show you this. Anything that is close to this bone, now you can see it, it's going to be affected 100%. Anything that is going beyond that, obviously, is going to be around 60-70% until we finally reach this green color, which will be affecting the mesh by 50%. And finally, the blue color, which means that this has not been affected in any way. Even though you have the form checked, if you have 0% influence, obviously, this zone is going to be controlled by this guy, but it's not being influenced in any way. So let's talk about the second one, the second bone that we have here. What is going on with this other bone? Well, he, on his own area, is also going to be affecting this, this mesh. So in our case, we just place two bones, and now they are affecting the mesh in this way. And probably, since this is a sphere, what is going to really be happening, in our case, Let's, let's place a real-world um, situation here. So th this is going to be around this color, affecting this, and obviously affecting this other side, 50% per each. Now, we are watching these two things at the same time. Blender, conveniently, will not show you every other weight at the same time. All right, let's, let's put that in perspective. Okay, we will have something like that. If we do a weight, uh, automatic weight, we will have this. But Blender will not show you, as a difference in Moto, Ma Maya, uh, 3D Studio Max, Softimax, etc. It will not show you the weights like this. What Blender will show you, it's only one weight at a time. It will show you something like this. Why? Because once you parent this and select automatic weights, Blender is so organized. They invented something that organizes everything parented, or in this case, skin or weight, into vertex groups. In difference to the other softwares where we use vertex groups to organize things uh, for many other purposes, in Blender, they intelligently have designed this so that it will represent every bone weight vertex organized by such matter that it will take the bone name and then it will organize it into this little icon you see here, which is the vertex properties, into this tab called vertex group for your sphere. Well, in this case, it's called cube 001. Uh, don't you worry about that. Um, this is just this is just an example. It's not the real actual sphere. This is taken from somewhere else But here you can see if you're using Rigify the different bone names assigned to be deformed by the vertex groups and if you walk through this list 
with your cursor up and down arrow, then every bone will show its influence inside the mesh. That's the way it works. You will find that Blender immediately shows you this. Now let's say I'm going to scroll down and then I'm going to be selecting bone number two. Somehow, you know, uh, you scroll down with your arrow keys on this vertex list and now the selection is set up on bone number two. So I'm going to take this just so we're playing make-believe. All right, that's my selection, current selection now. Let me correct this. Let me remove all of this so I can do this appropriately all right so let's say now I have selected bone number two and what I'm going to be be uh, seeing is this so if you scroll back to bone number one you will be shown this if I scroll to bone number two I will be shown this okay so that's the way we recognize which bone is being affected, or rather affects, this sphere. Let's recap. Shift A, create armature. Inside that armature, the entire hierarchy of bones are going to be stored. Those need to have names, because when we control P to assignate those bones to the mesh to form, we need to check on the values of the colors first for the influences. Those are going to be stored as the binded bone names conveniently into the vertex groups tab, which is in this icon right here on the object properties. That was pretty much uh, summarized uh, lesson on parenting and how do we get this, the rig structures and how do we parent and how do we search for weight painting errors. So obviously, now you need to enter into the vertex paint weight tools which you already know or you can already check on other tutorials but basically what you will be doing is subtracting or painting in the end in the end all weight paint reduces to this in blender you are either going to be using your drawing brush to paint influences or you're going to be using your subtract brush to delete influence. I know some other programs have um, this automatic editing value. Well, here in Blender you can do that too, but that's another video probably. But what you need to understand is that you can draw, which is paint, and then you can subtract, which is delete, modify, or erase, or lower down your influence. And in the middle, there is a brush called Blur. We have a brush that it's called Blur. And what it does, it's sort of an equalize between one weight from this bone to other weight from that other bone, any other bone. Drawing, paint, influence, subtract, delete, remove, blur, calibrate, or equalize the weights, all right? So this has been a kind of a long uh, version, but you need to really uh, grasp these concepts. So whenever you're seeing this in action on the videos, you can actually understand what's going on, why the colors are assigned that way. That's a standard coloring for the weights here in Blender. There are no yellows or pinks or, or some other shades that will not correspond to anything that we're doing in here. The color code is as I already showed you, and that's the only way it's going to stay. Zero, no influence, 50% influence, it's green, and 100 influence uh, for the weight, it's red, okay? That is conveniently stored. Every time you um, click and select something from the vertex group list, you automatically get that bone influence area highlighted now let's put everything we have learned into practice right now i'm selecting from my vertex group the bone which i want to affect my mesh and on my brush list i am selecting the subtract brush at a 100 percent or strength to one to delete the influences everywhere uh, besides the ear the right ear 
So I have selected the bone for the right ear and then I'm deleting its influence from the rest of the uh, face. And now I'm switching back my draw brush from my weight paint tools so I can uh, paint 100% the face to influenciate. We can do this in an alternative way by entering editing mode and lasso selecting every vertex we want. And from there on, I can just select my uh, bone and then click assign. And that way, 100% influence, which is this is lighter that you have right here, um, will be passed on to those vertices. See that? That was 100% direct um, assignment or influence to those vertices. That's amazing. Now let's go into edit mode because I want to create a new bone. And also I want to place correctly those bones inside the monkey's head. Okay? So as you can see, we have finished painting and we still have some little, little, little bit of influence to fix around the head. Let's try again. Around the eye, there's something missing there. Fantastic. It's corrected. Now I want to enter into edit mode because I want to duplicate a new bone. And that will be the jaw bone, which I'll draw from the center of the head. Okay? Parenting is another important thing that you will find here in the properties of the bone. If you click connected, you can see that bone is directly connected to. But if you place just the parent, then you get a relationship line between the parent and the children. And therefore, you can move the parent freely, and of course, the children will move accordingly. Let's go into edit mode. Shift D. I'm going to duplicate that main bone. I'm going to grab the, the head. In this example, I have just duplicated a bone from the main head bone in edit mode. And now I'm parenting on the pro uh, properties of that bone to the head bone. That way, when we go to weight paint, we should find the vertex group, but uh oh, there is no vertex group since we first associated this model with the first previous rig, which did not contain this last one jaw bone. And this is why you need to plan in advance what your rig will have as bones to later on associate it or skin or weight painted once the structure of the rig is completed, once the hierarchy of the armature is completed and always making sure that the bones have the form applicated and also that they are parented to some other bones in the case of uh, a hierarchy that would that you would like to do with co other bone constraints if you like this video please consider subscribing and thank you very much for watching this content on active motion pictures